Hello Internet, and I'm back, back from German Nationals, and um, not long actually, I've only been back a, a couple of hours, but um, down to business, down to, uh, you know, Pokemon stuff, reflecting on the weekend. Um, I will talk about what happened at the German National after this video, but there was a live stream from the event, from the German National. The first VGC battle on stream was my second round game against Eloy, so... It's quite interesting to be put on stream. They were deliberately picking the good matchups, which is a bonus, you know, instead of just picking a random game. Um, so that was one good thing. Uh, but also, I knew that uh, Eloy, well, when I got into the team preview, I knew that Eloy was, was using his same team, um, you know, unless he made any minor changes, from the Arnhem Regional. Now, if you've seen my videos from the Arnhem Regional, I played Eloy in the semi final and I had a really, really, really good matchup. So, knowing, knowing that, basically, I felt okay about this game. Going into it, obviously, you know, a little bit nervous. It's a national, it's important, and uh, he's a good player as well. So, I was obviously going to be cautious, but I felt, you know, quietly optimistic, I guess. Now, this video that you're watching now, um, this is going to be, well, I'm going to basically record the, um, you know, the playback from, you know, the, the video that's stored on Twitch's um, archive or whatever. So this video, you know, comes courtesy, I suppose, of the uh, Amigo event Twitch page who did stream this. And from what I've seen, which is not much really, but <laughs> I've watched this game back once. Um, you know, it seems like they did a, a pretty good job. So uh, after this, we'll talk a little bit about the national how it went and whatnot as well. So I'm just going to play this back. You'll hear the German commentators. You'll hear their thoughts and whatever. But then in between turns, I'll you know stop it and uh, give you my thoughts as well. So let's just uh, play it and see what happens. Oh, we see Barry's typical standard team with a leap part, a scissor, probably mega scissor, a Brilum, a Cresselia, a Terrakion, and a Thunderous. Let's see what he's going to bring into this match. It's funny that they know Pokemon that uh, it's my typical kind of team. <laughs> match of the day. Hype, yeah! Okay, yeah, the, um, like the commentator's <laughs> microphones a comment if you like that. are a we bit made it abrasive <laughs> for this uh, first half a so minute, but Barry they do get turned down a little bit. And our screen went on. We see the typical Breloom and Leap, Breloom, Leapard lead, versus the Cresselia. Um, it's a shiny Cresselia, I like that. <laughs> Cresselia and Hitman Tom lead. We see the Intimidate going on and hindering the Breloom plus Leaper, but, but Leaper doesn't really care about Intimidate, but it's a kind of good lead for Barry. Yeah, I'll just pause it there. I think it, it was a pretty good lead for me. I knew that if, you know, unless he'd made any changes to, him t to his team that would catch me off guard, for example, putting goggles on Cresselia or something like that, which I thought he could have potentially you know, done after it was me that knocked him out of the Arnhem Regional. Um, I was going to be a little bit more cautious about it, but um, I just thought if I played it safe, you know, played it, you know, didn't make any drastic moves, then I felt I had a good chance of winning this. So this is a pretty typical, you know, as the commentator said, uh, lead of Life and Brillo. Uh, I can just fake out the hit on top, and I can just spoil the Cresselia. If he switches the hit on top out, that's fine. You know, it doesn't matter. Um, as long as I put this Cresselia to sleep, then that's okay, and I can start uh, switching things around and um, getting the game going from there. So let's, you know, because see what happens. You can just fake out the... Um Capoeira, as we see the German name, and mm. he can Capo score Era the Cresselia. And Cresselia. So that's a pretty easy way. To as you can see, the text is from uh, Eloy's game on this, well so this is from his place. point of view, Let's see what obviously. He's going to do. And uh, text yeah, is Hitman all in German. So we're switching out that Hitman top, um, and let's see. It's the third Pokemon is Heatran. So obviously, in a good matchup against that Breloom, and Lightheart is using that. Ah, perfect. Well done. He switched out that Pokemon where he expected the. Fake out, obviously. And we see the Icy Wind from Cresselia doing damage to Breloom and Leaper. Now Heatran is guaranteed faster than both Pokemon. Oh, and oh, we see the Spore. But the spore. Oh, and Cresselia, Cresselia goes to sleep. to sleep. Not a good day to sleep today. Oh, and we see the leftovers by Heatran, so there is no safety goggles or stuff or Shukaberry. Yeah, so as the commentator said, um, that fake out, although he did switch the 
Um, hit him on top out, which was, you know, fair enough for him. Um, getting that little bit of damage on the Heatron let me see that it was still leftovers. There were no goggles on there or whatnot. Um, the biggest surprise for me in that turn was that Cresselia was faster than Brillium. The commentators didn't sort of pick up on that. Um, I think that has to be a change from the regional. Um, if... If if it was like that in the regional, then I either didn't note it. I, it, it can't have been. This Cresselia is, is super fast for Obrelum. So we got that icy wind off. I'm um, straight away, maybe in a, maybe a little bit of a, you know, not, it's not really that bad of a situation. But both of my Pokemon are at minus one thanks to his icy wind. But his Cresselia has got a guaranteed sleep turn next turn. So now I'm thinking, okay, so this Heatran, it can substitute... But it won't because it's sitting in front of Lipid. If he does substitute and I don't switch Lipid out, then he's just completely lost that slot for a turn. So I'm thinking he's just got to go straight for a, a Heat Wave because both of my Pokemon are at minus two, at minus one speed rather. So um, Cresselia again's got a guaranteed sleep turn. Let's see how uh, how this works so out. We can see also here because this is a live feed straight from the wave. game. That, sorry, commentators, I don't want to talk over you. This is a you know live feed straight from the game. You can see the time limit going down here as well. Now, this is very interesting. So this is proper tournament stuff now. Barry can switch in his Terrakion, I think. Expecting the heat wave. Let's see what Barry and Eloy are going to do. Let's see indeed. Here we go, Cresselia is coming out. Has done his job slowing down the two opponent's Pokemon, bringing in that Hydreigon, another nice and shiny Hydreigon. Oh, yeah, shiny. And also Lifeheart is coming back to its trainer. And we see the third Pokemon, it's Terrakium. Yeah, Barry expected the oh, heat it's wave. double switch. Oh, oh and he got Cresselia. his Cresselia. And Heatran seems to be the only Pokémon willing to attack this turn. It's the Heat Wave connecting with both opponents' Pokémon. But Barry predicted that Heat Wave and sent in his Terrakion and Cresselia because he didn't want to get his Breelum knocked out and get... Yeah, exactly. So he does go for the Heat Wave as, as I uh, expected him to. I didn't expect him to switch his Cresselia out. I thought he might have wanted to try and um, get a, uh, you know, a, a, a sleep turn done with. Uh, but he, I suppose, makes a nice move. He brings his Hydreigon in, uh, maybe expecting my Cresselia to come in, because against his Cresselia, who is asleep, and his Heatran, um, he knows that I've got Hidden Power Ground on Cresselia. He might think that I could try and bring it and start setting it up. But neither of my Pokemon want to take a Heat Wave. I don't want to, you know, swagger the Heatran or anything like that. There's no need to do that, um, you know, on that turn. So I'll make a double switch, knowing that both of these can take a Heat Wave. Because he did bring the Hydreigon in, um, and I brought my Terrakion in, I'm actually in a really good position now, because Terrakion threatens both of these Pokemon with a close combat. I know that he can bring the Hitmontop in, and at minus one, the Terrakion won't one-shot either of these. So I was pretty wary about that. Um, Cresselia could maybe start setting up if I targeted the uh, Hydreigon with a close combat, but I didn't really want to do that, so but let's, you know... So yeah, this light part potentially knocked out, so it was a pretty safe play by Barry's part. Yeah, yeah, I felt safe and doing we that. Now see a good matchup for um, Eloy. For all of you international viewers, this is a chance for you to learn a little bit German. This is a German screen, as you can see. From what you know from your international games, you know what these comments like Zeit Limit, which is the time limit mean in your language. Uh, and also <laughs> some of the Pokemon names appear here in German, but we will make our we will do our best to translate them into English in real time. And I have to correct myself, sorry, it is a good matchup for best right now on the on the field or for Eloy. So Hydreigon is coming back and Hitman Top is making its second appearance, nice and shiny and dancing in a good mood obviously and bringing <laughs> down the attack of Terrakium and also Cresselia. Hitmon Top's are very well known for dancing all night long. I like it. <laughs> it looks like it has a lot of energy left. And Lightheart is also coming back. A lot of switches going on, I noticed that. And yeah. a protect from Heatran. It is obviously protecting against Terrakium's close combat. Close, close combat, yes. Yeah. So that was, that was an interesting turn. Um, again, so many switches. Like in, this, in these first two, three turns, 
we have had so many switches, three, three, three switches last turn, two switches this turn. So this is all about gaining momentum and you know, getting the foothold into the game. Um, interesting that I brought Lipid in there, and here's he trying to protect it. Um, I can threaten it with an Encore next turn, um, or I can go for the Fake Out on the Hitmon top. Now, a better play for him would have been to not protect with Heatran, and, well, I suppose he was fearing the um, Hidden Power Ground as well. If I had just gone for a Close Combat on Heatran as I did... It, because he did put me a minus one with him on top, that wouldn't have knocked the Heatran out, and he could have knocked my Turakian out with an Earth Power. So that would have worked out better for him if he had just done that. But I could have double targeted the Heatran with a Hidden Power Ground and a Close Combat, although that would have been a bit of a, uh, an overreaching move, I think. Uh, instead, I bring the Lipid in for the um, Cresselia slot, yeah, the Cresselia was there, thinking that if he does Dark Pulse it, because I know from the Arnhem Regional that really his Hydreigon is the only thing that can hit my Cresselia hard, so I think he's pressured to Dark Pulse that slot, so I bring Lipid in, which can obviously survive a Dark Pulse, um, and then I can just start threatening the Heatran with close combats. So that was my thinking that turn, but because we did both switch out like that, um, I am still in a good position, because Lipid threatens with an Encore, it, fe it threatens with a Fake Out, and Terrakion, well, Terrakion's at minus one, so it doesn't really threaten either of these anymore. So, um, I am in a decent position to gain momentum again, but I don't, but Terrakion isn't really giving too much for me right now. Combat. So let's, well done. let's see how this so plays out. <laughs> lost move for both players, isn't it? No, it was no lost move for Eli because he brought in his Hitmon top, which intimidated the Terrakion. Now, depends on depends on how well the Heatran is trained, mm -hmm. can live a close combat from Terrakion and come back with a flash cannon. So... Yeah, I think even like a, a 4 HP, no investment Terrakion, I, I think, uh, don't quote me, I think can survive a minus one close combat even still. So I got a problem. We got a problem on our screen. Now it's coming back. Here we go. Okay, let's see what's going on there. Pretty good, pretty good battle until yet. Both players are switching really good. Both players try to get the upper hand on the field. So is Barry doing again, switching out his Terrakion for his Cresselia. And Barry goes for Fake Guard to fake the Hitman top out. So no protect from Eloy's side because he's in fear of the prankster on core Leapot God. Okay, so I think the com the commentator is maybe a little bit confused there. Um, I I think looking at that, the Hitman top did flinch after I used Fake Out on it, so he was trying to use Fake Out too, um, in case I wanted to go for the encore onto his uh, Heatran. His Heatran went for the Hidden Power, gr uh, the Hidden Power, the Earth Power onto my Terrakion because it was a um, because my tracking wasn't minus one, I wouldn't be able to knock the Heatran out, like I was saying last turn. But I brought the Cresselia back in, so again, another another switch. I've pulled, you know, a few switches this, t this game already. Um, brought the Cresselia in because, um, you know, basically, uh, an Earth Power was, was quite good there. Maybe um, a minus one close combat. I wonder how much that does to his Heatran, because if it does less than 75%, maybe he could have got a substitute up there. So maybe that's something that he could have... He might have thought about, but uh, he just wanted to go straight for the Earth Power onto Terrakion. But now I'm in a, a good position again because uh, because this Heatran... Well, actually, yeah, what am I saying? He probably didn't want to go for a substitute because I've got the Lipid out here. <laughs> so he definitely wouldn't have wanted to have done that. But because he did go for an Earth Power, um, I can um, pull some more shenanigans and uh, really get my foot into this game now, especially because I brought Cresselia in. Um, I'm remembering probably about at this point in the game that, oh, this Hitmontop's got Custard Berry, hasn't it? I was thinking all along that it had um, Eject Button, but no, it's got, I mean, presuming anyway, if it's the same as his uh, Arnhem Regional one, it's got Custard Berry. So I definitely want to start setting this Cresselia up because I know that um, even if it gets to, you know, plus one, his Dark Pulse from Hydreigon won't do massive chunks to me. So, uh, you know, let's see how this plays out. Let's see how the commentators so react as well. So once you protect yourself, Leapart can encore you into that protect and makes your Pokemon useless. So you have to switch out or just stay useless on the field. It's a pretty equal game, actually. 
both players are trying to get always the upper hand on the table. It's lasting relatively long for a Leaper Loom team. Long for a life at Brilliant team. <laughs> and Bess is really known for playing that team the whole season, so everybody... Here's every that Encore from Leipard onto that Heatran, so it's going to be locked into that one move. And Cresselia is powering up its Whoa. special attack and also defense with a Calm Mind. That's pretty tough versus the Heatran. And Heatran is trying to get that Leipard down. No, it's, no, it's no. not enough. But, but now Hitman Top <laughs> is finishing this Leipard and is knocking out the first Pokemon of the match. The first KO we see today in Stuttgart. He doubled up into that Leipard. So Elo is ahead with four Pokemon against three Pokemon, but one Pokemon is still asleep from Eloy. It's Cresselia. So let's have a look. Yeah, let's just pause it again. So, uh, I, I didn't mind Lyford going down that turn. Lyford going down that turn means that I need to um, really get lots of damage onto his Cresselia when I can. But I, I, don't, I didn't mind letting Lyper go down there because I knew that in return I was going to, unless he switched it out, this Heatran, I was going to get um, basically locked into Earth Power and so it wouldn't be able to touch Cresselia at all. And Cresselia um, you know, can just get a free Calm Mind up. And again, like I say, if I do get a Calm Mind up, then I can one-shot this, um, hit him on top. I can do so much damage to the rest of his team as well. That's all I want. I just wanted that one Calm Mind for the time being. So Lyper's go down, Lyper goes down. I don't really mind that too much. Bess is just in the corner to lose this game unless Cresselia call mines up. What and is Eloy's strategy against Cresselia powering up its special forces? Um, depends on what the Heatran runs. He may burn it with Heatwave. Oh, <laughs> he wanted to do the Heatwave, but he just yep. he just recognized <laughs> that he's still according to the Earth Power. This might and will affect his decision making. Does he have to switch Heatran out, <laughs> or will he continue using Earth Power? A few turns into the game, uh, this cameraman, as you can see in the bottom left corner, there's a, there's a picture of me under Eloy's name. Um, <laughs> um, Eloy um, and the picture of me. So, yeah to take my picture. So um, that picture was taken <laughs> actually from the middle of this game. Um, but you know, just swap that around. They do actually get Eloy's picture in here as well, but still under the wrong names. So, you know, I'm sure you know that that's me and that's not Eloy. <laughs> um, I guess he will switch it out. He got the Hydreigon in, bed, in the back, which can Dark Pulse the Cresselia commanding mm -hmm. up. Uh, Dark Pulse is super effective against the Cresselia and can potentially flinch it to the win. But it's also uh, scared by the Breloom, so let's see what he's going to do. So yeah, I like how, uh, how turned on these uh, commentators are to the extra Cresselia effect as well, like the Dark Bolts can flinge, the Heatran can burn the Cresselia. It's still asleep. Oh, when he's paused. And another Pokemon going to sleep with Hitmontar because Breloom is getting out its spore. Oh, and we see Hidden Park around by Cresselia. We've seen it before in regionals. And he wanted to catch the Heatran, but Ido predicted that pretty well and switched in the Cresselia, absorbing the hidden power. Quite wow. off. Yeah, that was that was quite an interesting turn. He expected me to spore his Heatran, so he brought the Cresselia in. That's what I'm expecting, and to uh, just psychic the him on top. Now. I just basically played it the other way around. I went for the Spore onto the Hitmon top and the Hidden Power Ground onto the Cresselia. Um, the Heatran was pretty threatened there, so I could have maybe tried to... You know, this is maybe one of the turns that I could have made a prediction. But, uh, you know, I didn't really want to. There was no need for me to, really, because I know that I've got such a strong matchup. Um, so I just Hidden Power Ground that Heatran there. Um, you know, but he switches it out to the Cresselia and the Levitate activates, so he knows again that it is Hidden Power Ground. Quite a tired pack of Pokemon now on the field. What do you do <laughs> if both of your Pokemon are asleep? That's pretty tough. That's really pretty tough. You There's try Eloy's to picture avoid up there now. getting two or more Pokemon uh, fall asleep. It's pretty hard to do anything. You don't want to switch in because you don't want to have more Pokemon asleep. You just hope you only get two or three rounds of sleep. And the bullet seed from Breedloom and another Calm Mind. It's uh, obviously making use of the additional time Barry now has to power up his Cresselia while both of Eloy's Pokemon are still asleep. Okay, so that was maybe the one turn in the game that 
I probably should have played different. Um, I know that that was Cresselia's one guaranteed sleep turn, and I know that Cresselia is faster than Breloom, so I probably should have... Um, you know, maybe still gone for a bully seed onto Cresselia, but gone for an icy wind as well, just to make sure that I know that Brillum does outspeed it next turn, and I can definitely get another hit off. I did go for another Calm Mind with Cresselia, which might seem a bit greedy, because at plus one, it's still one shot, um, this hit on top, but I know that at plus two, a Hidden Power Ground should one shot his Heatran, and I just wanted to be able to one shot it just so that I can get it out of the way and don't have to worry about it anymore. Also, I can take uh, Hydreigon's Dark Pulse is much better at plus two uh, from plus one as well. So that's why I went for it. But um, as I realize, oh yes, Cresselia is faster than Brillu uh, and can potentially wake up now. There's a one in three chance that Cresselia can wake up. Um, I don't really want him to be able to just psychic and knock out Brillu here because I am already... Um, you know, one Pokemon down. He has got four Pokemon left. He has got three Pokemon left. And as the commentators are going to, um, you know, notice now, the timer is a thing here. So we see the timer. We still got six minutes to go. I don't think that Elo is going to play on time. He's ahead for three. I, I want to explain the timer for those who didn't play on an official event yet. Uh, if the timer is over, you see it there called Zeit Limit, six minutes and 30. Um, when it's over, you win when you got more Pokemon as your opponent. If you got equal Pokemon, you win if you got more HP left. So that's a pretty standard tactic to win against like double team teams, which rely on um, a minimize or double team to win the game. You just time stall them. So time stall is sometimes a good tactic. Let wow. Hitmontop is coming back, it's seen enough of that sleep already, it's Hydreigon coming into the battle ring and, oh, and the protected is protecting, obviously anticipating one of the Pokemon to wake up, but that's not the case. Cresselia is still asleep and it's opposing Cresselia oh. is using Ice Storm, a very effective move against Icy the Hydreigon wind. and it's taking 50% of that health, also slowing down both Pokemon. And now I think Barry is going to double up into that Hydreigon. Okay, so uh, first let's think about that turn. That was a pretty straight, you know, straightforward move for me, I think. Because the Cresselia could have woken up and it can knock out Brillium from where it is now. I wanted to play it safe, you know, really wanted to play it safe. And protect Brillium and just get an icy wind off. Now he probably didn't anticipate, um, well I don't know, he probably, he must have thought that my... Uh, Cresselia was going to go for an icy wind, or maybe he didn't, um, just to get the drop on his own Cresselia. But he brings his Hydreigon, and maybe he didn't think the icy wind was going to do as, as, as much damage as it did do. But it is a plus two icy wind now. So because I've got the speed drop on both of these Pokemon, I can maybe spore the um, Hydreigon. I do outspeed both of them, basically. But also, Hydreigon is potentially in another icy wind range. So... Straight away now, you know, we've we've done some switches, we've done a bit of setting up, and um, his four, his three, you know, so his one Pokemon ahead of me, but he's got two that are asleep, he's got speed drops on both of these, and I've got two car mines up, so even though I'm one Pokemon down, I'm feeling very good, but there is only five minutes and a half left on the timer. I bet he's going to just match punch it and uh, Icy Wind again, but... He's still in fear of the sleeping Cresselia, who is, can potentially kill the Brinoom. But I bet, yeah, it's going out for I Hitmontop. Dragon is coming back again, and that tired Hitmontop... Yeah, I think he realized that he, he needed to protect that high dragon. Again. I guess Elo and his team didn't to get that Cresselia. much sleep yesterday. It's at least intimidating both of the opposing Pokemon, which is only relevant to the Brinoom. Taking the bullet seat again to that Cresselia, which is still asleep. But well, that takes like literally nothing. I guess it's heavily trained into defense. Oh, when we see a crit, the first crit. And Cresselia is just hanging on a... Another ice storm coming on. Is that enough? Oh no, Cresselia no, is barely hanging Ooh, on with six it's still HP. There. Now, can it make use of it and wake up this turn? No, it's still no, asleep. No, three turns sleep. But maybe Eloy can make use of it because he didn't lose a single Pokemon yet. Okay, so... Um, 
maybe I got a little bit lucky with that one critical hit on uh, Cresselli, but, you know, I don't think it made any difference, really. Um, the Ice Wind just fails to knock out Cresselli there. I just played that safe. I know that Chris, uh, my Cresselli outspeeds both of his Pokemon now, and Icy Wind should have knocked out the Hydreigon, and I did, like I was talking about before. After Lifeguard goes down, I just need to make sure I get lots of damage on the Cresselli when I do. His Cresselli had um, a 50-50 chance of waking up that turn. And um, luckily it stays asleep. If he did wake up, he would have been able to knock the Breloom out that turn. But because Cresselia did take so much damage uh, before it would have knocked the Breloom out, Cresselia is in Icy Wind. It's in anything range right now. So I still think, even though I would have been 2-4 down at this point if it did get the 50-50 wake up, I still think I would have been in an okay position. Maybe at risk of being time stalled, though. Well, let's see what he's going to do. The Hypmontop looks tired and dance a little bit slowlier. Ba Barry is now in a pretty good spot because the Cresselia doesn't even uh, do any more much to the Breloom. His only fear. Breloom can just take it out yet. He got his own Cresselia at plus two, plus two. So it's pretty strong right now and can take out the Hypmontop. And Barry is about to win this game unless Eloy is reaching the timer with four Pokemon, but I bet he won't. So he's still thinking, and three seconds left. Better so do he's taking Eloy. his time with these moves. Maybe the timer well, stall is uh, back, so in his mind here. For later, or trying to save it from fainting, and in comes that Heatran again. And he match punches into that heat trend, which nice. hurts. That's about one third of the of its health, and there is a psychic attack on Hitmontop, and oh. it can't withstand that attack. Hitmontop is going down, and uh, now we're back to even. We're back to even, but Barry is in front. He got that hidden power ground, which kills heat trend. He got that Breloom, which can. Just match punch the Hydreigon. Yeah, okay, so <laughs> so I am in a very good position here. Um, I just played that turn safely um, because I was pretty certain that a Mac Punch would have done, you know, that little amount of damage to his Cresselia. So I, I knew that uh, his only switch, if he was going to switch his Cresselia, was going to be something that's weak to fighting. Just so happens that it was Heatran that he brought in. So I get a little bit of chip damage with... Um, uh, you know, Mac Munch onto that, and a Psychic does knock out the Hit on top as well. So uh, the Hit on top could. Um, I didn't see the order of the the turns there. It's a little bit sort of harder to to note when it's in German. But I don't think um, it tried to wake up. Maybe it did. I'm not. I don't. I'm not sure. I don't, but I don't think it tried to wake up before I got the Mac Punch off. If it did wake up and he went for a fake out, then again it could have worked. You know, differently. But. Um, I don't think he went for the fake out. I'm not sure, you know, you can watch it back, you can rewind this on, on YouTube quite easily and see. But even if he did try and go for that fake out, there was a two in three chance that he was going to stay asleep there. So Which is coming out right now. Let's have a look. Barry is far ahead. We have to see some wonderful plays by Eloy, but it's hard to make it back. It's really hard to make it back in this step of the game. Both Pokemon of Barry threatened the both Pokemon Eloy still got. And Eloy is Okay. Some contemplative moments so here. So The another, another protect from Hydreigon. And here we go. We see the hidden power ground. Which is enough to take down the Heatran. And it faints. It faints. So that's it for that's it for Barry Anderson. And the Breed Room. Okay, so that was um, not necessarily a, a guaranteed win from that turn. Um, I don't think he should have protected with his Hydreigon there, because Breloom is at minus one. I'm pretty sure Breloom's at minus one. So Mac Punch probably won't knock Hydreigon out here unless I get a critical hit. So he should have, I think, gone for a Dark Pulse onto my Cresselia on the off chance that he got the flinch there. Because 
as I did, I mark punched the uh, the Hydreigon thinking um, that if Rhythm doesn't get targeted this turn, if Cresselia does get its hidden power ground off, um, then I can just, you know, again, mark punch it next turn. Um, and as long as Cresselia doesn't flinch, the Heatran is going down, so Brilliant will be safe. That was my thinking. Now, um, I could have maybe gone for the Spore onto the, um, the um, Heatran instead and gone for an Icy Wind, which would have, you know, again, knocked the uh, Hydreigon out. But, again, that rides on it not flinching. So if he did Dark Pulse my Cresselia that turn, if he flinched it, then he could maybe still be in the game, but he just protected it. Couldn't connect with Hydreigon, which was protecting itself, and now Cresselia fast And I do have Terrakion in the back still, so... down to half of its health. Maybe That's it was always going to be mine. Right yeah, because the Cresselia can just Icy Wind both Pokémon and take him out. Now that's a rather quick turn. We see Breedoom taking out that Cresselia before it even can try to wake up. Oh, and we see the Rocky Helmet on Cresselia. We did some damage to Breedoom. And finally, Hydreigon is doing some work, but we can see, oh, it's not even doing half with all the Calm Minds Cresselia no. has done. And here comes the Icy Wind. And is that's it, going it. To be enough? that's it, yeah. I bet so, I bet so, that's it. Hydreigon goes down, and the first match goes to Barry. Barry Bess Anderson wins versus Eloy Hahn. Here we go. Watch out the next. Here we go again. Help. Okay, so uh, let's just pause up there and uh, um, uh, let's just talk about the national a little bit. So, um, you know, again, obviously I played that last turn quite, you know, safely. Just Mac Punch the, the Crystal, I knew it would knock it out. Um, even if he flinched the Cresselia or whatever, then I had Terrakion and I had Breloom too. So um, I, it would have been quite hard for me to lose that game, I think. Um, it was such a good matchup. Um, but <laughs> let's just talk you know, a little bit about the National. I don't want to complain too much. Um, but that was, that was my second round. Uh, I won that, so I was 2-0. Um, it, 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 <laughs> it all fell apart after, the, after that round of Swiss, basically. Um, I lost my next round against uh, an Italian chap. Um, in one turn, his Zapdos avoided my Terrakion's um, Rock Slide, and he, with his Garchomp, Rock Slide flinched my Cresselia as it was going for a plus one Icy Wind on his Garchomp and his Zapdos, and his Discharge paralyzed my Cresselia. So that was just all in one turn, and that gave him a lot of momentum, um, which allowed him to seal up that game. So I wasn't too pleased about that. Um, the second game I lost was, amusingly, or maybe not so for me, against one of Eloy's friends who was using Eloy's team, this team that we've just seen. And obviously, as I sat down, I thought, well, okay, I've got such a good matchup, how can I lose this? But he played it completely differently. I don't know if he'd been talking to Eloy, but it was like... It's like I was playing, you know, a game two of a, of a best of three. Because he brought the Charizard and he brought the Thunderous instead of Hydreigon and Hitmontop. And I played it expecting, you know, what Eloy brought. So um, that didn't work out too well for me. Um, the first sort of half of the game, I felt I was really in control. I felt, you know, I was, I was happy. I was really happy. There was one turn, though, that I'm kicking myself over, where I basically got lazy, um, you know, complacent, more lazy, I think, and I just went for a swagger with Lypud instead of bringing my Terrakion in when he had Heatran and um, Charizard out. So that was the one bad play from that game, which I think, you know, even if, you know, because I just went for the swagger on his Charizard, if that Charizard did hit himself, then I think I would have had the game sealed up there. That's why I went for it. So that's why it was lazy. I should have brought Terrakion in. I should have won that game. Um, annoyingly, I didn't. Um, the third game I lost, um, which was in round, um, I don't know, five or six or something, um, was to the timer. Now, all of the Premier Challenges and the regional that we've played in so far this season, we've not had the official uh, timer going on, this 15 minutes and 45 seconds um, per turn. So, Carmine Cresselia is very nice. It's a really nice Pokemon, but in 15 minutes, it does run the risk of getting time stalled out. Now, the third game that I lost, if it was a game on Showdown or if it was on Battle Spot with the extra long timer, I would have won the, I would have won the game because he couldn't really knock out my Cresselia. It was set up, um, it was poised to knock things out, but he got a couple of early knockouts on my Pokemon and was able to time stall me. Again, I made a very bad play in that game. 
Um, I should have knocked out his Scrafty when I had the chance. Um, I don't know what I was thinking because I switched my Terracon out into Breloom. Um, obviously, you don't have the context because I'm just sort of telling you what happened. Basically, I made a very, very bad play. That is the one play that I'm kicking myself most out of in the whole National. Um, and the fourth game I lost, yeah, I lost four games, was to... Um, I don't even know who it was. I can't remember if he was German or Italian or Spanish. Um, I just know he wasn't English. Um, but he basically got a U-turn critical hit on my Lipid on turn one, which it needs a critical hit to knock it out. Um, and he had a, meta, a mega Metagross that could uh, sweep up from there because I didn't take my scissor. So um, I, was, I was not happy to, to lose that. My final record was 5-4. Um, you might be scratching your heads thinking, why did I take this team again? Everyone knows it. Yeah, I know that I'm basically at a disadvantage in every game I play because, uh, you know, everyone knows this team. You know, thanks to myself using it on YouTube, thanks to, you know, Cybertron even using it on his video, on his channel. Um, you know, everyone and other people, you know, testing it out as well. So, people know this team. I did change a few things. Um, I won't, you know, reveal just right now what I uh, changed, but... Um, I th well, I felt pretty good going into this tournament. I had, uh, you know, had a really good streak on showdown the day before I set off. Um, I was feeling really good. I was really disappointed to end 5-4. And, annoyingly, the top 128 get championships from this tournament. I was ranked 129. Now, that was annoying. That meant that I got nothing from that national. So, I was not happy. Uh, really not happy. But I don't want to go into that too much right now. Um, let's see how the next two nationals go. Um, really, I don't know what I'm going to take. So, <laughs> you know, watch the space. Um, I don't know if... Um, well, next weekend there's a one Premier Challenge that I'm going to. And the weekend after there's a UK National. So maybe I'll try and find some time to upload something in between. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. I'm, I'm pretty sort of stressed for this uh, month, basically, with these three Nationals. You know, obviously I'm working as well. So um, we'll have to see what I get a chance to upload, basically. But, you know, I hope you've enjoyed this video, at least, with um, this live stream. And, um, you know, my, my thoughts and whatever too. But, uh, you know, thanks for watching this, guys. You know, again, please, uh, you know, like it and share it and subscribe if you haven't. And, you know, let everyone see this. Uh, thanks to, uh, you know, Amigo Events Stream, I suppose, as well, for allowing me to, uh, you know, record this onto my channel. So, um, you yeah, know, thanks a lot, guys. Um, goodbye for now.